Well, Mike, welcome to A Word to the Wise. It's so great to have you here today. How are you? I'm doing good. It's a pleasure to be here. And thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Well, there's so much I want to talk to you about today. Um, first and foremost, you talk about, you know, being young, struggling with addiction, mm -hmm. and then you became a super successful entrepreneur. How did you make that switch? Can you walk us through that journey? Well, I just, you know, I, I look at my life and I can't believe how amazingly lucky I am. But I was um, 24 years old. I'm in a 12 step program and my life's a total. I have an eighth grade education. I have no money. I'm 40 grand in debt. I have negative net worth. I, the only credit I have is bad credit. And a friend in a 12 step program says, hey, you're you're a mess. And a guy in a 12 step program says you're a mess and you better listen. So, and he goes, I might know somebody that could be able to help you. And I said, OK, I'll check it out. So I went and met with this guy. In my book, I call him the mystery man, because when I wrote the book, I couldn't remember his name. And when I wrote my first book, Love Unfiltered 2014, then when I wrote Creation Frequency, I really wanted to know who he was. So I did. I actually hired a private investigator, private investigator. His name is Douglas Fitzpatrick, mm -hmm. Fitzgerald, excuse me. And so I didn't know any of this at the time. I'm just a, a desperate young man. And he says, Mike, you come here seven weeks, one hour a week, and you'll get everything you want in your life. Well, and that's a pretty big promise, right? And mm -hmm. uh, I had very little faith, and it was $50 an hour, and I didn't have 50 cents. And I said, okay, so for some reason I said yes. And so he started out, he said, we're going to create a balanced life. So he broke my life into six areas, relationships, career, finances, um, owning a house was one of my intentions, a contribution goal. He said it's very important to give back to others and stuff like that, right? So. So the first six weeks, he said, the, the important thing he said, there's no difference between imagination or reality. And I'm sure everybody's heard of you can imagine it, you can create it, but it's true. And let me explain further. So we wrote these six powerful intentions as if they already exist. My number, he said, what's the number one thing you want in your life? Well, two years prior, I'd walked out on my wife and my two month old baby girl. Mm. And I was divorced now two years later. And it was eating me up inside that I'd blown this thing. And then someone else was going to raise my daughter and blah, 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 blah. And so we wrote this powerful intention and went like, Lisa and I are so happily married. Our daughter, Michelle, thrives in this marriage. So I'm writing this intention to about this woman that hates my guts, right? And so at the end of six weeks, I now have six intentions. And week seven, he brings out a boom box. Now, you're a lot younger than me, but back in the day, that's how we listened to music on this big thing called a boom box. And he had a cassette tape and it was in, had theta brainwave music. So, you know, our brain goes in different frequencies and, and theta is the best for manifestation. And so he says, I'm going to play the theta brainwave music. And then he handed me a tape recorder with a microphone and he handed me a relaxation script. And he said, I'm, I'm going to play the music and I want you to record this relaxation script. And then I want you to read your six intentions. Little did I know by the theta brainwave music and the relaxation script, I was putting myself in a hypnotic trance, which mm. basically we're in from birth till age eight. That's why we absorb so much because we're in a hypnotic trance. And so and then I read my intentions. So he records it. He takes out the, the what was blank cassette tape now is now has all these intentions on, hands it to me. So I leave there seven weeks later, $350 poor with a cassette tape. And he says, the best time to listen is every morning, right when you awake, because you're coming from Delta to Theta and Alpha, and right before you go to sleep, because now you're going from Beta down to the Alpha and the Theta. So those are the best times of the day to get the brain, to pierce the conscious mind into the subconscious mind. And why is that important? So right now, your subconscious mind, my subconscious mind, at the bare minimum, is taking in over one million bits of information every second. A million bits of information. Some people say as many as 10 million bits of information. So it's taking in all this information and then it chooses 40 bits of information to deliver to our conscious mind because that's all the conscious mind can handle. And this doesn't judge. The subconscious doesn't judge. And it will give you whatever you focus on. So, for example, if you walk around all day long, go, oh, my life sucks, Never ever, nothing ever goes right. Your subconscious mind will go over those million bits of information and feed you 40 bits of information that support that belief system. Okay. So you're self-defeating yourself, right? So, so anyways, I start listening every morning, every night. 
One of the things was to own my own business. Within four months, I owned my own restaurant. Mm -hmm. Two years later, my wife that hates my guts, my ex-wife hates my guts, calls me up and asks me, tells me she needs a date for a Christmas party. Would I take her? We get remarried. We have three more children. Um, all these things come true. You know, I wanted to make $10,000 a month. I've made million dollars a month. I mean, so uh, there's, a, there's a science behind this. It's not woo-woo. You know, the, someone wrote the book called Think and Grow Rich. And I think it really did a lot more harm than good. It's a great book. Don't get me wrong. I recommend it all the time. But it's more than just thinking and growing rich. We got to take some action. You know, we got to we got to get up off the couch. And the beautiful thing about the creation frequency and what he taught me is, see, for example, when you're focused, you, you, you where your energy flows, where your attention goes, right? So now I have these six intentions that I'm listening to every morning, every night. My subconscious is looking for things. And guess what? It will also deliver you ideas and thoughts from in the field of infinite possibilities, right? So I get an idea on how to open this own restaurant and boom, it happens. So that was the biggest gift in my life. And, and it, this works. I want your listeners to really know that it takes some effort. You have to really do a little bit of work. But once you do the work, then, you're, then you're, your resources now become all everybody in the whole world. Because here's what's happening. I'm reprogramming my subconscious mind by listening to these intentions. And by the way, I'm, I'm, what, am, what am I made of? 50 trillion, human, or 50 trillion living conscious cells. They hear everything I think and say. They feel everything I feel. They're my consciousness, right? But more importantly, the power of sound. You know, the Bible says that God spoke this world into existence. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And so when you take this sound frequency, which is the cassette recording, while I'm listening and reprogramming myself, that sound frequency, and Tesla said, if you want to understand the universe, you have to understand energy, vibration, and frequency. And that's all sound is. You know, right now, you think I'm speaking words. I'm not. I'm moving air molecules, which are causing a vibrational frequency. They hit your eardrums and go into your mind, and they become language in your mind. I'm just, I'm just causing a frequency here. So when I have these powerful intentions, that sound vibration energy, that frequency is going into this field of infinite possibilities. This is space, right? But it's filled with lots of energy, chi, prana. You know, I can take this phone, and I could text you right now. You're in Virginia. I'm in Columbia. Yeah. And instantaneously, what's that traveling on? OK, there's a field here of energy. OK, and it's vibrating at a certain frequency. You're vibrating at a unique frequency. I'm vibrating at my own unique frequency. It's like we all have our own IP address. And, you know, what? sometimes you meet someone and you immediately resonate with them. You know, and we used to say back in the day, you know, you vibe with them and you're on the same page. It's that's all it is. So everything is energy, vibration, frequency. So I create these powerful intentions and then I create this amazing life of wealth and health and vitality. And this works. This isn't woo woo. OK, science is now proving this. You know, it's in the Bible. This is as old as, you know, time. Right. This concept. But now science is proving it. And that's what's so exciting about it. Wow, Mike, that was... Sorry for the long answer, by the no, way. No, <laughs> that was incredible. That was incredible. I mean, I was, you know, in a trance there for a second, just <laughs> listening to everything that you said. One, I do like that you're saying that this is not woo-woo. Part of the reason right. why I started this podcast was to bring conversations like this and demystify and take right. away that concept like this is woo-woo because yeah. the world we live in, only values data points and science prove it to me yeah. how do you know how do or how are you sure that works so yeah. i'm glad that we are having these conversations and reaching the larger consciousness because you know on paper you know you're a business you're a successful businessman and if nobody knew anything about you they probably would be shocked that you're having these conversations right, right? because right. of the world that we live in um so i love that explanation and demystifying it and pulling from different sources to to make your point. I didn't think that makes sense. So everything that you're talking about right now really sounds a lot like learning how to hack the subconscious mind. Because yes, we, yes. Go ahead. We, I'm sorry. We, no, no problem. Because we hear a lot about manifestation. I hear that word all the time. People have different ways of explaining manifestation. One thing that seems to be true across the board is that what you think 
you can manifest, right? But you're taking it a step further. You're yes. talking about sound and wave frequencies and, and all of that stuff. So what would you say are the three keys to manifestation, if you could if you could break and, it down? And let me say first, because you, you hit the nail on the head, but there's one missing ingredient I want to add to that. Okay. Because what we think does become our reality. Mm -hmm. There's not one thing in your physical reality, and I'll challenge you, and I'm not going to have you do it now, but I would challenge you to think of one thing that is in your physical reality today that didn't start as a thought. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everything starts as a thought. So that's powerful right there. But what makes it manifest faster? What makes it more true? And by the way, you know, when I create my intentions, like I'm creating a powerful intention right now to build an amazing retreat center here in Medellin, Colombia. But so that's my intention and I'm the creator, but I'm co-creating it with the creator of all that I call God. So it's always evolving. You know, so so you you want to be specific, but you want to be flexible. But the one thing I want to add to the the thought is when you link a powerful emotion to it. See, the thought is the electrical current that goes into the field, but the, the heart is the magnet that draws it to you. And so the, the the like my intention to create this beautiful retreat center, okay, is all because of love and service to those less fortunate. I want to give them an opportunity to come to a place and realize that they're a creator and not a victim. And I want to show them that they have the ability to heal themselves and that everything they need is already within them. So I've linked so much love to this, to this intention of creating this. So the thought is the, I'm going to create this beautiful retreat center. And the emotion attached to it is this love for people to give them this opportunity to come here to this beautiful place and to heal. So, so I mean, you got to add an emotion. Um, so, when I go to create an intention, right, you got to go within. Everything is within. You know, it's interesting. We have these eyes that look out, but all that we also have a third eye too, which which is our inner eye and is connected to our Creator. And so, when we go within and we feel that. Um, we get the answers, okay? And then once we say, okay, I want to create an intention, then I want to be as specific as possible, and I want to be practical. Like, for example, you know, I, I think anything is possible, and in the field of infinite possibilities and the quantum field, everything is possible. But let's say I want to play quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. I'm 65 years old, okay? So, so that's what I mean when you got to be practical and, and realistic, because if I have... I I could create that intention. I could listen every morning and every night. It's not going to get through my conscious mind into my subconscious mind because my conscious mind can say, dude, you're 65 years old. You're old. You're slow. It ain't going to happen. Okay. So, so, but out of that intention, what could happen is I become friends with the quarterback of the 49ers. I become the coach of the quarterback of the 49ers. I get in the bright. A million things could be good, could happen right there. But the other thing is connecting to a higher purpose. And what I find is that a lot of people aren't even clear on what their purpose is, you know. And so I really try to encourage people to go within. And what what keeps you up late at night excited? And what makes you jump out of bed in the morning and want to go out and create? That's your purpose. OK, and the, and the higher purpose, the highest ones being love and contribution and giving back and helping others. But that's good for a guy that's 65 years old that's already created success. But you're a young woman, so you need to still manifest a, a career. You need to manifest money. You may want to manifest a family, whatever you want to manifest. So at different points in our life, when you were a baby, you want to manifest crawling. Then you want to manifest walking. Then you want to manifest talking. So it depends where you are in life. But when you... It's important to have a purpose and it's important to understand how to fulfill that purpose. And that's what I teach. That makes a lot of sense when you said, you know, having that intention and then connecting it to yes. an emotion, connecting it to your heart. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I, I've heard so many things about manifestation. So what you described initially, going back to the sound waves and, and listening to that, um, 
was it music or, or, or so sound? yeah so it's so it's it's yeah it is music and it's it's tuned to theta brainwave music so mm. so we have brain waves right and so right now you and i are in beta okay we're yes. we're talking we're active we're getting done the, well the one above that is gamma now if you want to activate that one you got to be careful because that's where you're connected to, you become one with everything yeah okay so but for manifestation and and for creating alpha and then theta so i like theta the best for for manifestation and be able to get into my subconscious mind and work with that so it's just a, it's just brain it's just music with that frequency you know and everything has a frequency and keeping those intentions in mind like the, the no I, you record them. them so we have an app we actually have so we don't use a boom box anymore we created an app it's free it's the icon is cf for creation frequency okay. and so now you can just download the app the music is already embedded in there. The script for the relaxation script is there and it's recorded, or I prefer that everybody record it in their own voice. And so it's all right there. And then you just write your intentions. Mine are usually about a paragraph to it the most and very concise, very tight, very specific. And then you record those. And the trick is to take the time, five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night is to listen and 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 pay attention you know consciousness all consciousness is and very few of us are conscious uh, a lot of the time we're usually working on our subconscious mm -hmm. so that what does that mean that means that you get in your car you drive to work you don't even realize you're doing it it just yeah. it's automatic right and so we're only conscious five percent of the time but when we are conscious all that is is being aware so the more time of the day that we can be conscious and aware of everything going around us and everything going on inside of us, that's how we pick up these great frequencies of ideas and thoughts. That's how we manifest the right partner. That's how we manifest the right funding. That's how we manifest the by being aware and conscious and awake. If we're just going about our day unconscious, we miss everything. You know, So that's why it's really important to be conscious. So my question for you is how does someone clear the negative thoughts that tend to mm. overshadow our or cloud our subconscious mind because you know people talk about meditation and you know all of that stuff but something that i struggle with is you know whenever i try to quiet my mind um i i will say that i have the potential for psychic gifts and that's something that scares me a little bit so whenever i quiet my mind it feels like i'm in this dark hollow room that's not necessarily scary but i'm i'm still scared of it at the same time and what comes in that room is a lot of like negative thoughts and doubts so how do how does someone get rid of that in order to really focus on their intentions and, and call in what they're looking for practice 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 and realize that you're programmed you're programmed you know, from from birth to about age eight, you're in this theta brainwave state, which means you're a sponge. That's why you can learn to learn a language. Yeah. I'm trying to learn Spanish right now. Okay, much easier to learn it when I'm six or seven. Yeah, I can I can learn it by just being around it when I'm six or seven because I absorb it. Yeah. Right now, I have to work hard to learn it. Right, so we got to get rid of our negative programming. There's so many people in the world today that. They're, I, they're, they're a lawyer. I say, why are you a lawyer? Well, my parents wanted me to be a lawyer. Why are you a doctor? My parents wanted me to be a doctor, right? Or in my case, there was a lot of negative programming. You know, I'll never forget my dad when I, you know, I was like 13. He said, hey, you're going to end up in prison. Okay, so that was my programming. And there was a lot of anger in my house. There was a lot of dysfunction in my house. So I had to work really hard to undo all that programming. It's like peeling an onion, right? You can keep peeling and peeling and peeling. So you have to realize, first you have to look at that, say, okay, what was my childhood programming? You know, because we're programmed to think we had a great childhood until we start really going in depth and looking at it. So, whoa, wait a minute, okay? And then besides that, there's, there's past lives, there's past lives from our parents, which is all embedded in our DNA. So there's a lot of work and stuff to unravel here. But we have to look at our programming and say, okay, I keep doing this, okay? How can I change that? We got to write a new program. So what do we do? We, cr we create a compelling future. That's what the mystery man was doing with me. Okay, I was stuck in the past. Oh God, I screwed this up. She left me. I'll never get her back. I don't have a job. I didn't go to school. So all this negative past. So basically what happens to most people, I wake up in the morning, I pick up my phone, I look at my Instagram, I look at my emails, 
I go, oh man, you know, and so I'm, I'm doing the same actions as I did before. And when I'm doing all that, I'm getting the same emotions. You know, the brain is a pharmacy. It's creating the same chemicals. So my body is addicted to those chemicals and wants to keep me anchored to the past. Well, guess what? If every day I think the same thoughts, I feel the same thing and I do the same thing. Can I really expect a different future? No, it's impossible. You know, someone called it insane. You know, keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. That's the definition of insanity, right? So what we have to do is create that compelling future. Now, everything happens in the present moment. So I can only, so when I'm in the present moment, I'm living in the present moment, I got two choices. And the, and the brain is just a, 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 me a memory of the past. Okay, so I got to move into my heart. I always tell people the hardest, longest journey you're ever going to take is 18 inches long. It's moving from what I call the insane asylum, the, the stuff you were talking about, the programming, all the BS, right? Which, which in fact, this is a supercomputer. If I use it properly, the problem is I'm letting the insane asylum run the show. But when I move from here to here, this is my truth. This is my essence. This is my soul. This is eternal consciousness, right? And this can never lie to me. This can never trick you. It can't. It doesn't have it in it. It's pure. But this thing here, I can manipulate. I can control. I can do a million terrible things, right? So when I live from here, now I got this supercomputer, and I start writing the new program from here, what I want, what I desire, what makes me feel good. Now I create this, this intention, and I use this supercomputer to manifest it. So we, everybody, most people are living backwards. But when we live from our heart, and we've learned to trust our heart, you know, many of us have a... a um, a, a wounded heart. So, so we do a lot of work around that. We have to clear up all that wound in this and heal this heart. And once it's healed, we can open it. And once we have this beautiful, loving, open heart, then we can say, okay, what fills my heart? Well, I want to create this wellness center. I want to help people. Okay, now I use this. Okay, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do that. And then it starts to flow. And then you're getting these downloads from I call God and say, okay, great idea. Boom. Bad idea. Okay, let's go this direction. So I'm flexible. I'm nimble, but, but I'm always here. And if it feels right, I do it. And if it doesn't feel right, I stay away from it. That was powerful. It's about moving from the head into yeah. the... the and, I, and I'll give you a very powerful example of this. My father grew up with two alcoholic parents. His father died when he was 11 and cirrhosis of the liver. His mother couldn't manage him. He became a ward of the state of California when he was 14. He had an aunt, thank God, a single aunt that raised him. But my father didn't have know what love was. My father lived in a state of fear. He lived up here in fear and did, couldn't touch this. He couldn't go here. And I always tell people, listen, you're going to make this journey, I promise you. But unfortunately, most people take it in their last breath. And it was just about a year ago this time where, you know, and I had a difficult relationship with my dad, but I, when my mother died in 07, I did everything I could to heal it. Cause now he was, he was dependent on my mother. He was the crutch. Now he needed another crutch. And I tried to fill that role as much as I could. But when he was on his deathbed and couldn't, I didn't even know, know if he was conscious or not. Right. Cause the eyes were barely open. He's laboring to breathe. He's close to death. He's like within hours of death. I went into his room just by myself and I sat next to him and I told him how much I loved him. I told him what a great person he was, what a great father he was, what a great man he was, how he's going to be with my mother shortly. And let me tell you, tears streaming down this man's cheeks, okay? He finally moved here and he finally opened it. And so when he took that last breath, he was free, okay? And that's, but why wait? Take, do, take this little journey right now. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts. You get hurt living here. I, I guarantee you, you're going to get a hurt a lot more. Here, you get angry, you get resentment, you want revenge. Okay, that's a whole nother. This energy kills you, destroys you, and makes your life miserable. This You're going to get hurt, but that's okay. You're going to survive that. And every time you get hurt, you're going to most people are going to get better. Some people get bitter. I'll give you that. Some people can't take this and they become bitter. And that's a shame. And guess what? They'll probably get to come back here and redo this again. Okay. But I say, Hey, feel it, feel it, feel it. You know, there's a, I think it was Descartes. He said, I think therefore I am. No, I say, I feel therefore I am. And so that's super important. Yeah, that was, that's so powerful that you were able to kind of really, 
help oh, your dad release such a blessing. himself. You have no idea. The blessing yeah, for me. Blessing. Yeah. I mean, I know it was yeah. a blessing for him, but gosh darn, what a blessing for me. Yeah, I'm sure you were able to let go. Even, oh, I'm sure you oh. were doing the work to forgive healing. your father, but the, healing, that's healing, tremendous healing. healing right there. So um, it's, yeah, that gave me goosebumps. Another mm -hmm. thing for me too is I realized that I'm able to manifest the things I'm looking for when I'm, my intention is there. I'm coming from my heart, but I'm not attached to there the outcome. Go. Yes. And I'm not attached to how it happens. Cause yeah. But here thing... the ego is going to be attached. The yes. heart's not. Yes. As soon as I release the attachment of this is how it's going to fall into place, it yeah. happens just like that. Amen. Cause Amen. I know that when I have intentions, I start trying to calculate like, well, I need to do this in order for it to happen. I need to do that in order for it to happen. And it's, we live in such a, magical world and we are magical beings and we have we don't even understand who we are exactly as right. as beings and yet manifestation is one of those things that really allows us to tap into um the non-physical aspects of who we are as human beings um something else that you talk about are the um i believe you say that they're the four life-changing truths about the universe. Could you talk about yeah. that a little bit, please? Number one, this will sound crazy to some people that haven't studied quantum physics, but matter is an illusion. Okay, mm -hmm. so what do I mean by that? So you're looking at Mike Murphy, the story of Mike Murphy, right? Which consists of skin and bones. And when you break that down, it's the cells hold this together. And then you break down cells. There's there's chemicals, there's molecules, there's genes. And you keep going and you get the atoms and then you get the particles. And, it went, and then when you at the end of the day, it's all energy vibrating a certain frequency. But here's what's interesting about an atom. An atom is 99.9999% space, okay? So I'm made up of atoms. Atoms are 90, that's a fact. Atoms are 99.99999% space. That's a fact. So the illusion is I'm solid, okay? What's holding this together? What's holding this table together? Well, that's the electromagnetism that's holding it together. And I just came up with this the other day, and I, I got to research and play with it some more. Because... I think was holding this together, these atoms to create this thing called a body that houses my soul, my essence, my consciousness, my, you know, the real me, because I'm not my body and I'm not my thoughts. So if I'm not my body, am I not my thought? Who am I? I'm eternal, timeless consciousness. I'm a soul. And so, but here's the thing I came up with the other day. So what's, what's really holding this together, right? And I, I came up with a thought, intention. I intended to be born into this physical world. We come from singularity and we live in duality, okay? In singularity, there's just peace, love, joy, God. In duality, there's good and evil, there's black and white, there's polar opposites, right? But I think, this is just a, there's no proof to this folks, So, but, but in my mind, if intention is holding this together, and maybe intention is holding everything together. You know, you take an acorn, it turns, Maybe it's that, that acorn's intention to become an oak tree, right? And it takes time. And so I think that that it, somewhere in the great beyond in space, I intended to become this person here in this time and space in duality. And I think it's that intention that holds us together. Just a crazy idea. But I think that's one thing. So so that matter is an illusion. Now, if you that's crazy, I know. But if you study quantum physics, which is fairly new, um, it, it makes sense. The other thing is anything is possible. In the field of infinite possibilities, when I can let go of the ego, the story of Mike Murphy, when I can let go of the body, when I can go into a deep meditation, and you, you mentioned you struggle with that, we might want to come back to that. But when I can go into a deep um, meditation and become no one, nowhere, and, and become nothing is where the real I'm connected to all. Okay. And that's, and that's another important ingredient is that we're all connected. You know, I'm sure you've had this experience that you're thinking about somebody and five minutes later, they call you. Okay. We're all connected. And the illusion is the separation. And, and that's what drives me crazy about the world today is we fight over everything. 
Christian, Muslim, gay, straight, black, white, Democrat, Republican. And then we break it down to, you know, I mean, it's just getting crazy, right? And we're all together. When you suffer, I suffer. OK, so that that's why. And this is very, very important. So we have our individual consciousness. Right. And I can control that. I can control what I eat, what I drink, how I feel, what I think. Right. But how come sometimes and all that could be perfect. And then sometimes I I just feel sad or I just wake up and just don't feel it. It's the collective consciousness. It's this web of everybody connected to this. And when when. When the world is suffering, we're going to suffer. And this was proven in uh, recently in 9-11. You know, they were able to measure the impact of the world, the emotional level of the world and the energy of the world, how that event affected everybody, right? And so just think, just imagine, you know, because, you know, the world is kind of getting goofy. I don't know if you've noticed, <laughs> but I've noticed. And, and, and so I used to get angry. I used to think, hey, let's fix this. Come on, let's let's do something. And I realized, no, we, it's too late for that, folks. I mean, they got all, whoever they are, they got all the power, all the money, all the weapons, and we're just little us. How do we, how do we shift this? If we were to unite in unity and we were all to close our eyes and go within and picture this beautiful world that we're where we're all united. We're all one big loving community where you help me, I help them, blah, 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 blah. All this evil would dissipate. it have to. There would be so much positive energy of love and joy and contribution that the evil could not exist. It wouldn't be able to breathe and it would just collapse. I think it's collapsing, actually. I think it's one of its last breaths right now. All this craziness and insanity, I feel like the energy is shifting. And I think this is a pattern that happens that maybe every 26,000 years, I don't know. I think it started to shift May 21st, 2012, the end of the Mayan calendar. And what I think is happening, I could, there's no proof of this, but my personal belief is we're going from a masculine energy, which is domination, penetration, to a feminine energy, which is love and nurturing. And so I think the powers to be, the people in this that want to control the world and masculine energy, they know what's up. They know what's coming. And and so they're doing they're 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 fighting like heck to try to hold on to their power, and 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 they appear to maybe be winning at times in some areas. But I really think at the end of the day, God, love, humanity, goodness is going to win out. That's my hope and prayer. Yeah, that's my hope and prayer as well. You said so much there. Um, <laughs> just to, to start off with first with the, you know, we're moving into more of feminine energy that's nurturing and, and loving but one thing about the world is that you know everything has like a yin and yang and yeah. and masculine energy is still very important but we're we're trying to move into the more positive aspects of masculine energy um and also be being cognizant of not going into the negative aspects of feminine energy as well just kind of finding the healthy balance between both both energies um and something else that you mentioned when you talk about meditation and, and us, you know, what's holding us together and the intention of, of it all. When you were talking about meditating and getting into a space of not being attached to who you are in this earthly body, just feeling like you're nothing, just reminded me of, of something that I that I do is, you know, when people ask me, you know, who are you or how would you define yourself? Since I can remember, I've always struggled with that because I'm still learning and figuring out who I am, but I also understand that who I am is never going to be fully understood. So I always struggle with putting my, a label on, on who I am. I feel like I'm, I'm everything and nothing at the same time not in a negative way or in a self-absorbed way but it's i always used to struggle with you know attaching myself to something even as basic as oh what do you do for work i i know what i do for work but that's just not who i am i struggle with labels right. and like you said people get so stuck in the labels and it, it causes a lot of friction and it's you versus them but we are really all connected and when my my family hurts i hurt when strangers hurt i hurt and 
I don't when, an, when, anim, when animals hurt, you hurt. Yes. When That's animals connect, hurt, yes. You know, we're connected to the trees, everything. I mean, it's everything. all one energy is energy. And, and guess what? Energy can't be created, nor can it be destroyed. So Absolutely. we, and we are energy. That's who we are. And, and I would ask you, um, who are you without your story? You know, yeah. who are you? Your timeless consciousness, eternal. And that's who you really are. You're not your body because that's made up of 50. Well, we've been talking millions of our cells have died and millions more have been born. Yeah. And we're not our thoughts because where do they even come from? You know, so if we're not our body are not our thoughts, then who are we? We are energy. We are soul. We are timeless. But And, and, and we, you touched on this earlier. There's two worlds here. There's the seen world and there's unseen world. OK, yeah. and they both have laws. If I drop this pin, it's called gravity. It's going to keep falling, okay? In the unseen world, there's plenty of laws. And so, and the law of attraction is one of them. We just got to explain it in the way where people don't think it's woo-woo. We use, because there's science now that supports this, you know? And so that's, and and we know science has already proven that thoughts are energy vibrating at a certain frequency. And science has proven there is a field here, okay? A field of infinite possibilities. And so when my thought to manifest this beautiful retreat center that I'm building, for example, goes into the field and it meets other thoughts of the same frequency, eventually either that person comes into my life or I come into that person or somehow there's a connection made because we're vibrating at the same frequency. And this is so powerful to understand that that what you vibrate at, so a lot of people want what? Money or love, okay? Most people, right? <laughs> or lose weight, right? So, so, so let's say I want money. Well, I just, my whole life, I've been pretty good at manifesting money because I, I look at money as currency. I find that interesting, frequency and currency, right? And so I always just pretend I'm rich, okay? And guess what? I, I attract money, you know? Now, you have to be careful and you have to be responsible and you have to be a good steward of this money and you have to have plans to generate more if you need it. But we, sometimes we're we're chasing money. The ego's chasing money. We don't even know what we want it, why we want it. So I think, you know, there's a lot of, you know, stuff on the internet today and on Facebook, you know, money, 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 money. Well, you know, that doesn't really turn me on. What, what I'd like to manifest is more integrity, more honesty, more love, more compassion. You know, I think by when we manifest these things, the money's just um, the money's just going to show up, okay? Because it's it's in becoming, it's in becoming a new person with a compelling future that I overcome the 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 old person and I leave that behind. And that's a lot of a lot of magical things can happen with that belief system, especially around healing, because what's more important than health, you know? So yeah. so a lot of people will use meditation to create that healthy body. Okay. And you create it in your mind and then your mind starts making chemicals for a healthy body and starts giving this to you. And that old sick person kind of gets left behind and we step into a new healthy person. Now, is that easy? No. Does that take work? Yes. Is meditation easy? No. And, 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 and when we first start out, are we lousy at it? Yes. Okay. I mean, we all got a monkey mind jumping all over the place, especially in today's crazy world. Okay. So we got it. This is a practice. Now, the beautiful thing about today's world, we don't have to go to India and find an ashram. Okay. All we got to do is go to YouTube and man, there is meditation coming out of your ears, all types. And, and, so, and so you find what resonates with you, but you have to, you have to work at this. You have to research what's the types of different meditation, you have to find a teacher. I find for me, guided meditations work the best. If I just sit here and try to sit here, it's not going to go very well. Okay. So I find guided meditations that I love, or I'll find meditations that will link, you know, we have a left brain, right brain, right? And they're completely different animals, okay, with completely different missions. But when we can get them working together, we become 10 times more powerful. So there's meditations where you just listen to sound frequencies vibrate, but what it's doing is linking these two sides of the brain together. And then you bring heart coherence, you attach love and, and gratitude to it. Gratitude being probably the most powerful in this state. So if I got a grateful heart, and my left and my right brain are firing together at a certain frequency, at the same vibrational frequency. You create like this triangle of this gratitude with this. Miracles begin to happen, I promise. But it, but it, it's not easy and it takes time. 
Yes, and it takes a lot of practice, like you and said. And a lot of practice. Um, so you've mentioned your retreat center a little bit, and, and I really want to talk about your retreat center because I know that it was um, – it's, it's going to be dedicated to your wife, yeah. I believe. Yes. Yes. Um, I know at the beginning you talked about um, your your wife and your your, um, your wife, Lisa, but this is not Lisa. Yeah. This is for Margot. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk first and foremost, how did you meet Margot and why is this retreat being dedicated to her? This is a crazy story. So first of all, I've already told you I married Lisa twice. Okay. Now I got a lot of money. I got four wonderful kids. I coach little league baseball. I teach Bible study at the church. I mean, I'm the, I got the perfect life. I live in a four million dollar house. I mean, you know, I I got it made. I go to Hawaii, take my kids every year, and I have the Chevrolet dealership. And I'm just sitting there, you know, working one day, and these two girls come into my office to sell me Hispanic uh, television advertising, which I was looking to get, and they were cold calling. So, but the moment that Margo and I eyes met. There was an instant, unbelievable connection. You know, um, Plato talks about, you know, a twin flame, right? Which is one soul cut in half. And we spend many lifetimes looking for the other half. And it's not always convenient when these two halves find each other. In fact, the day we first met, she'd only been married two months. And I was 43 and she was 27. So, and we're both, we both have integrity. We both are tried to be honorable people. And so we just work together. And for seven months, we're working together, and she's falling in love with me, and I don't know it, and I'm falling in love with her, and she doesn't know it. And one day, we compare notes, and there was really no stopping this. Now, I have, you know, 20-something years of hindsight to look back and see how this fits perfectly together for all the parties involved, okay? But at the time, it was a freaking nightmare. You know, we both, the biggest, the biggest mistake of my life, maybe the only one I'd want to take back, is when I went and told Lisa that I needed to separate, I lied and I said, I just needed time. I should have said, I met someone, I fell in love. And by the way, we only had an affair for a couple of weeks before we separated, or at least we were decent enough about that. And we both you know, thought we were smart enough to figure this out without hurting our spouses, right? Which is impossible. So anyways, but I would have said, you know, I've met someone, I fell in love, I'm sorry, goodbye. Long story short, um, so we start a relationship. Her husband doesn't know, my wife doesn't know about, Three or four months into this, her husband finds out all hell breaks loose. Three or four months after that, my wife finds out all hell breaks loose. And then a month after that, I find a stage three tumor in her breast. And she's 28 years old, 29 years old. Wow. <laughs> you talk about a dilemma. And, you know, my doctor says, hey, Mike, you know, it's in her lymph system. I mean, this is not going to end well for her. And and I'm, you know, and I... You know, I might not have been in love with my wife, you know, like I was in love with Margo, but I was in love with my family. I mean, they were everything to me. I had kids from 10 to 24 kids. And, you know, and of course, let's be real. I mean, if I'm going to be honest, money plays a role in all this, right? I'm going, I'm going to get cut in half and all. But and anyways, long story short, one day I had a heart to heart with myself and I said, if I go home and I leave this girl and she dies, can I live with myself? And the answer was no. And and plus, I was mad in love with her. And plus, I now know we were meant to be together. But anyway, so so for, it was it was chaos for a few years, right? And and so then finally, we got married in 06. We met in 00. We started a relationship in 01. And so in 06, we get married. 07, she's desperate to have a baby. So we're going to do in vitro fertilization because the chemotherapy just destroyed her insides. And in that process, they find a little tumor here and it's stage four. And now it starts spreading. So, so she lived another four years. And what, what happened was I wrote another book called Living in Color that really tells us last six months of her life. But on December 1st, 2010, the doctor says, Margo, unfortunately, the cancer spreads to the lining of your brain. If you do nothing, you have six weeks to live. And if you treat it, you have six months to live. And so... We, we lived every day like she was going to beat it. We fought like hell she was going to beat it. And every night we prepared for her to take that last breath. And I, it was the most profound blessing gift anybody could ever give a person to watch this. I mean, she really was an angel. She really was probably not of, I mean, anyways, just it was so profound to watch. She never once asked why me. She never once complained. She fought like crazy and she loved everybody. Buddy. and she was an amazing person so anyway she passes and ironically within weeks a friend calls me says mike 
My sister-in-law is moving here from Wyoming. Her name is Amanda. She's 38 years old, the same age when Margo had passed. She has three kids. She's moving from Wyoming to the Bay Area to get better care for her stage four breast cancer. Can you take her to Margo's oncologist? I said, sure. So I took her there and he ordered some tests and I went with Amanda. And Amanda was a minority and Amanda didn't have a husband. Amanda didn't have great insurance. Amanda didn't have resources. And I noticed that we went to three or four or five hospital visit or different hospitals for different treatments. And I noticed that her treatment compared to Margo's was like night and day, you know, and I was just the observer. I wasn't involved. I wasn't talking, just there to watch and hold her hand. And they'd either talk down to her or over her head and made me feel very uncomfortable. Right. But I was not my place to say anything. Then we get back to Margo's oncologist and he says, Amanda, the best protocol to extend your life are these three chemotherapies simultaneously unfortunately, your insurance will only pay for one. That's all I can give you. Now, I have to tell you, I was shocked. I didn't realize whether someone lives or dies depends on whether they have money or not. And I immediately just said, here's my credit card and you give her whatever she needs. And that became what is known as the Love for Margot Foundation. And from that point forward, I probably sat just like you and I are sitting with close to 200 women, all diagnosed with cancer. And I would give them financial grants up to $5,000 over five months. Because what happens is they're, they don't have money to begin with. They're barely getting by. These are mostly black women in Oakland and mostly Latina women in Palm Springs area. So they're barely getting by and they lose their job. And their expenses go up and there is no one to help them. There's no safety net, you know? And so I got so much reward for doing this, but guess what? It worked every once in a while it would work. Okay. They would take time off work. They get treated, they get better and they go back to work. But that was only about 5% of the time. Most cases, sicker, sicker, sicker die. And I'm going, wow. And you know, one, I can't afford to do this much longer. I'm going to go broke. Two, it's, it's not working. This plan is not working. This was a bad idea. And then, by the way, there's not a lot of people who want to donate money to a charity that gives money cash away to poor people, right? And so, so I learned a lot. And then I go, okay, what can I do now? So I started buying water purifiers, juicing machines, vegetables. I said, okay, come on, we're going to strengthen your immune system so you can withstand what they're doing to you, right? Well, now they think I'm their doctor and I'm a car salesman. So that didn't work. So, so, long, so lo and behold, I go, okay, I'm going to find a place. I'm going to build a place where they can come and they can learn to heal themselves. So it's been a long process. Uh, one thing that happened is I, I, I moved to Columbia. I bought an apartment in Columbia in 2015 and I started looking for a, a farm or hacienda to do this kind of work. That took a long time. It took maybe 18 months. I finally find out I buy it. Now we start fooling around with retreats. Then I fall in love with my attorney. Then we get married. Then I go on a year-long honeymoon. And then the pandemic hits. So we were, we're a little behind schedule for this plan. But finally, um, it's our first retreat is September 2nd. And I've gotten a little smarter because I don't have much money left anymore. So it's called conscious capitalism. So we charge people with money to go there. And we give scholarships to women from the Love for Margo Foundation. And we fly them here. It's a 16-day transformational health retreat. And the, the entire goal, not only for the people from Love for Margo Foundation, but from everybody, is to realize that they have the power to heal themselves. Okay, so the first week is all about physical detox. It's a juice fast, nothing but, and we grow our own vegetables. They literally pluck their own vegetables out of the garden, put them in the juicer. And then we do things like coffee enemas, infrared saunas, massage, IVs of vitamins, ozone therapy. We have a lot of fun activities. We're building some really cool like pickleball courts, swimming pool, gymnasium. So a lot of that, that's the first week. So we're going to really detox the body, get out the heavy metals as much as we can, get out the toxicity, give them good nutrients, and their energy is going to go up. And then we say, okay, that's week one is over. Now we're going to go into week two. And that's where I start teaching the creation frequency. That's where we start studying some of the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza, whose work is so profound. We go deep into meditation. We study the work of Byron Katie about cleaning up emotional wounds, uh, Dr. Uh, Bruce Lipton about consciousness. So we're going to go deep. It's, it's nine hours a day of education and meditation.
So it'd be like me teaching all this stuff with other people on our faculty that will either be there in person or Zoom in. So about six hours of meditation every day or six hours of education, about three hours of meditation. So people will learn to meditate and they'll and they'll fall in love with it. And it will probably be the most profound week of their lives. And we anchor each week. The first week we end with a liver and gallbladder flush where they pass all these stones out of their body and they go, whoa, man, I got all this junk inside me. So they're awakened to this. And that, that week has about three hours of education every day on how to detox their body. And we anchor that week. And so the very end of that week, Friday, we drink some olive oil, the st stones come out. The next day we anchor that with a, uh, a, a sweat lodge ceremony and do a lot of you know, just we want to anchor that into them. Then Sunday is fun day. So we do something fun. Then we switch gears. And then the second week of the teaching, the Friday night of that week, we end with ayahuasca, which is a plant medicine ceremony, a six hour journey. So whatever they haven't figured out on their own at this point in the game, okay, we're going to let this plant medicine come in there and work with them a little bit. And then again, we'll anchor that with another sweat lodge ceremony the next day and an integration. And then we have a big graduation ceremony and I and then and then there's accountability going forward. We're just not going to say, "Hey, thank you." No, we're going to stay with you and continue to keep you accountable, keep you on the path. Because well, you know, many of us go to these things, we go to a Tony Robbins date with destiny, or we go to a Byron Katie school to work, or we do this work, and then or we go to Doctor Joe. I just spent a week with Doctor Joe in the advanced training in Cartagena here, and then but then it dissipates, right? So we want to we want we want to make this so powerful of a transformational event that it sticks forever. And now they go home and their families transform, their friends are transformed, their community gets a little ripple effect and eventually the ripple effect just starts to grow. And that that's, that's what it is, mountains of hope. Wow, I wish you the all of the success and I yeah. hope that you're aligned with all the right people yes, who can contribute you. the right resources to help you um continue on this journey because i think it's going to be so powerful in Thanks. in these women's lives so the work that you're doing is amazing um but just going back a little bit to your story with with margo um are you what are your thoughts on intuition really quickly before i ask my question i think it's everything yeah yeah i mean that's why we have a third eye I mean, yeah <laughs> That's why the whales go from Alaska to Hawaii. Yeah. You know, the problem with the problem with humans, we we've lost it. We don't trust it. Yeah. But, you know, you look at animals. Oh my gosh! I mean, that's how they operate. Yeah, because it really sounds like your 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 meet your meeting with Margot was destined, and your life oh was God. going so uh, well. Yeah. And you chose a path that would, in 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 the near term, I'm sure it's stable now blow up your life right so it blew everything up yeah but let me t let me tell you though and, and and more importantly the experiences i've had since you left her body would blow mm -hmm. your mind mm -hmm. and but i'll give you one example of how powerful because it was i mean it wasn't fair to my wife okay mm -hmm. <laughs> marry me twice i mean yeah. she got she got paid handsomely but she went through a difficult time of it course. wasn't fair to margo's husband okay it wasn't fair but but now you know but margo couldn't have children now her husband has kids my ex-wife is with a beautiful man and they have a beautiful relationship my kids all fell in love with margo they all grew immensely through this process mm. and my oldest daughter who was 20 she was the oldest at the time and she says she met margo and she goes you know i'm programmed to hate you and within 10 minutes i fell in love with her you wow. know that's that was the power so no it was the stress the havoc on all of us was just so bizarre but the truth is even margo i believe we're all in a much better place we've all evolved as a soul and a spirit and consciousness mm -hmm. so but i mean it wasn't easy i'll tell you did you know intuitively that this was something that you should do like i i'm i'm, I'm trying to i'm, I'm, I'm gonna, trying I'm gonna to... say it to you like this I would go to my friends. I, I actually won that. I, I, I met a guy that gave a lecture in my church in California. He lived in Cincinnati. I flew all night. He was a very religious guy. I flew all night to have a meeting with him and flew right back. Just it's, I reached out everywhere. I talked to my parents. I talked to everybody. And, and the truth of the matter is, you know, the advice was always follow your heart. Well, guess what? I didn't know how to access my heart. It was yeah. Margo that her love that started to open my heart. And if she said it once, she said it a thousand times. She said, Mike, you've got to learn to be vulnerable. I didn't know what she was talking about, mm -hmm. okay, until she died. 
Okay. Mm. And now this broken heart was split so wide open, but the ego had no power to resistance. And and I used to say it all the time back in the day. It w- I had no resistance. God was able to finally come in, fillet open my heart, take out all the arrogance, all the self-centeredness, all the BS, and replace it with love. And and but it doesn't mean it I did wasn't filled with grief for a long period of time. Doesn't mean it was, but but it forever changed my heart, my soul, my destiny. So I have z if you if you gave me a chance to go back in time and do it all over again, I'd make the exact same choice other than lying to my wife. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's a powerful story. Mike, you shared so much with me and, and the audience that's gonna be listening to this. Um, but you know, this this podcast is called A Word to the Wise and <laughs> I always ask my guests for final words of wisdom. It could be about what we've been talking about. You shared so much wisdom already, mm-hmm. or it could be something completely different that you just kind of keep in your back pocket as you go through life. Um, you know, that helps you move through life with, with, with more ease. So I've probably given most of my really powerful wisdom. And, and, and I, once again, I want to commend you for doing this. I know how difficult what you're doing is. I know how hard it is and i applaud you and i thank you because all this stuff helps the entire world so thank you for that um you know i i think the biggest thing as i look at the world today everybody wants to be a victim nobody wants to take responsibility and 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 and, and also there's a great book i'm sure you're familiar with it called the four agreements right yes i have and, it <laughs> okay and so my favorite one and i didn't know what it meant when i read the book about being impeccable with your word. I just thought it meant being honest. No, it's much deeper than that. When you really start being impeccable with your word and especially to yourself and you quit lying to yourself and you quit lying to everybody else. And believe me, we we tell a million white lies, okay? And you know, oh, I'm gonna say it this way, I don't wanna hurt this person. There's ways to say the truth without hurting someone. We just have to think and put a little time and effort into it. So for me, realize you're a creator this is why you're here. Quit being a victim. And, and it is tough, you know, because guess what? Let's say you got a cancer diagnosis. Let's say you're depressed. Let's say you're deeply in debt. Let's say you don't have a job. Let's say you have an addiction of some sort. You have to own that and say, I created that. Because if I blame it on my parents or if I blame it on this, I've given all my power away. But when I say, no, I created that. Even, even if, you know, I, I've, you know, I'm through the foundation. I met so many horrible stories. Okay. Like one beautiful soul, Benika, you know, stage one breast cancer, never should have died. She was sold for sex from age eight to 14. So her mother could buy crack cocaine. Terrible story. She, she wasn't a victim though. She was initially. Okay. And that's probably why she manifested the breast cancer. And she actually told me, you know, I'm responsible for this now. And she would go and help other women with cancer. She's a beautiful soul. She never should have died, but the healing never really came into fruition. But we, we got to quit blaming and we, and we have to take ownership for everything in our life. And once we do that, now we have our power back and now once we have our power back we can change all that we can create a new compelling future and we can become free and once we do that in the biggest way once once we accomplish that there's seven billion people in the world right now so many are suffering but if 3.5 billion of us would all find someone less fortunate and just give them a little lifting hand up boom this whole place would change dramatically you know, mm-hmm. and, and that's something we can all do. So do something for someone else. And if you can do it anonymously, you're going to break your ego. And when you break your ego, you're going to move into your heart. And when you live from your heart, then you can use a supercomputer to really create something beautiful for yourself and for your family and your community. Amen. Thank you so much, Mike. This was a wonderful conversation again thank you for coming on the show thank you for all of your wisdom and good luck on your your venture thank you you're a beautiful woman i appreciate it thank you